Hi everybody, I want to share with you today a proper form of uh, one of the most efficient exercises that you should incorporate in your strength training program. It's a deadlift. A lot of you might be very familiar with the deadlift exercise, which is an exercise that works your entire posterior chain. In other words, every single muscle on the back of your body. It's an extremely efficient exercise and very important exercise because it requires every single muscle to be recurring in your body. It, it requires a very strong and functional core. That's why I do not recommend you try this exercise yourself without the assistance of a professional. So if you don't work with a trainer yet, hire a trainer for one session, learn how to execute a proper deadlift. So in this video, I want to show you some pointers, some reminders. And if you want to try this by yourself because you already have a strength training base, please try with like five pound dumbbells, extremely light weights to just um, master the form first. Do not load a bar like I have here, 45 pound Olympic bar plus 50 pounds of weight. Do not try this weight. So. The reason I want to share this video with you is because I also want to talk to a lot of you who experience low back pain, do a muscle imbalance, or maybe you have bulge discs or herniated discs. And I'm going to use my, my friend Fred here to, to, to talk to you a little bit. Fred got a nice head today. But think about bulge discs. Here it's an illustration, I don't know if you can see, of a herniated disc. Basically we have this cushion disc between or vertebrates so here's each vertebrae and this area here would be one of the most vulnerable and i'm going to bring him a little bit closer would be one of the most vulnerable areas of your low back and the most common type of injuries happen right here between uh, l4 l5 and l5 s1 so you can get an inflammation in this disc if they're not loading properly. In other words, if the muscles around, you see how connected this air is to the hips, right? So if you have any dysfunction on the hips, for example, tight hips, stiff hips, weak glutes muscles, you can have an issue in the low back. In fact, in my 25 years of experience rehabilitating a lot of athletes and recreational uh, athletes and hardcore fitness enthusiasts, I have found that there is a tremendous imbalance on the hip or glutes area. Either stiffness, lack of mobility in other words, or weakness on the glute muscles or your butt muscles. If they're not functioning correctly, do you see how close these muscles are to that area? The muscles around your low back are designed to stabilize your body. In other words, to hold your posture tall. If you're running, it holds your spine in, in a proper alignment. They're not designed to um, execute a lot of force and torque. They assist other muscles, but the moment these big muscles around your low back become weak or under fire, under utilized, your low back muscles have to do too much work and that's when you can get in trouble. That's how sometimes picking up a pencil on the floor, you can have a back spasm. And it's not really the pencil that caused that, but it's a, it's a it, it's an accumulation of uh, muscle imbalance and, and improper loading in the body. And another very important group muscle, uh, uh, muscle groups that you want to work, address of course is the core, they are the muscles right here in front of your lumbar spine. That's why a functionally strong core, which is your deep abdominal wall, those muscles on the pelvic floor, your transversus abdominal that wraps your rib cage, to the hip and behind and your internal oblique. So we really talk about the muscles underneath the, the your rectus abdominal, which is your six pack, or the muscles underneath your obliques that you see. So the intrinsic muscles. And a lot of times people are doing, you know, a bunch of crunches, bunch of exercises, thinking they're working the core, but when I test them, they're not truly engaging the deep, deep intrinsic muscles of the core. So that's where I go directly when I'm rehabbing a lot of people with low back issues. So there's a myth that people believe that if you have any type of low back injury, you should not do a deadlift exercise. 
that's not true. I had bulge discs, which is a little low, uh, smaller type of inflammation than the herniated disc. But with a bulge, there's an inflammation in the disc, and the disc comes off a little bit of the, the, the vertebrae area. So there's always a risk of uh, injury there. So I have to take care of the low back for the rest of my life because um, if the area gets irritated or inflamed, I can experience a lot of sciatica pain, which I have and a lot of back spasm. And I used to be like in tremendous pain in my late 20s, early 30s. And today at 47, I can do deadlifts with a 45 pound plate on each side and have no problem. So I have a low back pathology and I do deadlifts. And why is a myth? Because a deadlift is an exercise that strains your entire posterior chain, which to begin with, you can have an imbalance that has caused a low back issue. And also that lift exercise is a tremendous powerful exercise to make a low back more stable. So here is an execution. I'm gonna talk about the breathing first. The way you breathe on, on, on a deadlift, you inhale before you lower the bar and you draw your belly button in. And again, if you don't know this maneuver, hire a professional. You draw in your, your, your abdominal wall in, you inhale, and through my exam, the entire execution of the exercise, I'm going with pursed lips, exhale my air slowly. So I maintain internal pressure of my abdominal cavity to stabilize that low back area. So I'm gonna just demonstrate the, the, breath, the breathing pattern here. So being, One mistake that I see a lot of people uh, making is to get to the bottom of the exercise when you have all the load on your body and exhale all the air out of your abdominal area. What that does, you lost all the pressure of the area and you still have to come out of this sticky point here and bring that load back up. So if you let all the air out at the bottom of your motion, you actually make your low back or your pelvic air very unstable when you're coming up. So I'm gonna demonstrate here the, the position. Hope you can see me from there, you can see my back. I'm gonna take a big inhale and exhale to the whole motion. Notice see how slow I did the motion, I work very slow. And in terms of grip, I use opposites. So one of my hand is facing this way and the other hand is facing this way. So this is the grip I'm using for the bar because this neutralizes my uh, rib cage. Here, I'm locking in a neutral position so the bar is now going to uh, move and rotate my trunk because if I grab here and you have a, like even a two three degrees of trunk rotation and you're doing that load with a slightly trunk rotation you can actually get injured that's why this exercise needs to be performed with light weights for weeks until you're able to um, do heavier loads this gives you a tremendous strong posterior chain strong core and it's one of the most efficient exercises the gym I hope this tip of that lift helped you and if you have a low back injury, again, please work with a professional. There is a way out. You don't need to live with pain. I'm the proof of that. And I have helped many, many clients to decrease or eliminate low back pain. Thank you so much. And I'll talk to you soon.